Good morning. Uh, I hope everybody is having a wonderful, beautiful, exciting day in Christ. I know I am. And um, it's such a great time to be in the Lord's presence 24-7. I mean, every breath I take, I, I want to desire more of Him and less of the world and to live out a holy life. Um, I just want to share a small, short message this morning, and um, this is in reference to my conversation with my son last night, which I didn't really want to be offensive or intrusive, and really, he knows my heart, you know, and, and uh, he knows that you know we all have choices that we make. I make choices, good, sometimes, sometimes bad, um, and the same is with him. But we were going in a discussion regarding the COVID vaccine, and I really want to bring this to light to everybody here. And it's a very short message, nothing really big or powerful, but it also ties into my wonderful time uh, talking to somebody this morning about Jesus and talking about having a relationship with God which is based on reading the word and prayer on a daily basis. Without having that, it's impossible to know that you're living a life today in Christ. Because he has to lead you and, fo and we follow. I mean, but if we're not praying and we're not reading the word, it's as though we're not really being led. I mean, other than by our own thinking and by our own agenda. So... But here, going back to the COVID thing, this is what the Lord has been speaking to me. And I pray and hope you will say that I can live with and I can believe in what you're saying, Ed. Um, first and foremost, um, everybody knows I have reading glasses on and uh, I do have... Um, contact lenses behind them as well. Uh, if you don't know, I have been di diagnosed by an ophthalmologist for uh, myopia and mystigmus, and this was given upon me since birth. Um, I'm not happy to have it, but I know people, not everybody has it, and there are more people that don't have it and have 20-20 vision and can see perfectly. My wife is a good example. She can't hear, and she's got hearing aids, and I've got uh, contact lenses because I'm nearsighted, and I can't really see anything, really, without having contact lenses. So it, it's very interesting how God made these fun things in our lives to be who we are. And what I am and what I do is not necessarily everything that God wants you to do. And how do you know? How do you know that I'm that that you're supposed to take a vaccine or you're not? Well, here's the the answer to the question: Do you pray daily to God? Do you hear God speak to you through His Word? Do you know that His Word is more than what you see in scriptures? It's what's in your heart in the midst of every situation in your life, and it does different things than what it was written originally for. And I've seen this for myself, that the scriptures do point out things of what has taken place in the past from people who have heard God. But how do they hear it? It was through prayer. It was through thinking about him and saying, Lord, I want more of you and less of myself. Or they just wanted to love and love and love God for all the great things he's done. And the great things he's done doesn't look like the way the world looks at great things. It could be, you know, I'm just living in a hut or I'm living in a desolate area. But I give praise to God in the midst of the, that I'm just walking through the valley. And it may be a valley of desolation, but... I'm still happy because I have my Savior next to me, and he never leaves me nor forsakes me. So going back to the vaccine, I don't want to cut, I, I said this is going to be a short message. So if you have a prayer life, if you have a reading in God's word and it's soaking in your heart, 
you're going to know whether you need to take a vaccine or not. God may instruct you. He may not instruct me to do it, but he may instruct you to do it. Um, and is that a bad thing? You know, some people may say, well, that's the mark of the beast. Well, I don't know for sure that that's true. I mean, it's not written in scripture that COVID is the 666 mark. Um, I've heard things about silicone microchips being inserted in our heads or in our forehands and stuff. I don't know what that's going to look like in the end times. Keep in mind, you know, John in the book of Revelation saw locusts in his vision as locusts because he couldn't discern, discern what it was that he was seeing when in reality it could have been helicopters. So I don't know. What I do know is I have a relationship with God. Now, some of you might think that what I'm saying here is bad. What I'm saying is not right. You need to get yourself focused on the word a little better, Ed. You need to be more in tune to doing something that is in alignment to the word and the scriptures. And I have to stop and say, how do you know? I mean, yeah, well, I have a prayer life, and I read the Word of God, too. I, well, that's great. But what is good for the goose doesn't mean it's always good for the gander. I mean, the situation with God is when Jesus appointed the 12 apostles, they all had a different story, a different situation. Peter wasn't living out life like Thomas. Thomas was doubting. But Peter had other issues like walking on water which is also a form of doubting. But the thing behind it is, is the stories are different, and yet Jesus loved them all. I mean, Peter was the only one that walked on water. The other 11 didn't. I mean, is that a bad thing to see as a Christian that one person gets a blessing, and that person who gets the blessing has to force everybody else to have the same blessing? No. Because that may not be what God's plan is for that person's life. The same thing of the man within the tombs in Mark chapter 5. I mean, he pleaded to follow Jesus, but Jesus said, No, I need you to do something different. I need you to go to the Decapolis and share what I have done through you to be healed and restored and make it as a testimony to bring people closer to me because I can't be in several places at the same time while he was there. He had other things to do. He had to go to Jerusalem. So the man in the tombs did so. But it was in preparation to something in the book of Acts where people that were being scattered abroad through Paul trying to persecute the churches, they ran to the Decapolis and they found refuge there. So really the moral of the story is we really don't know all the time God's ways are greater than his ways than our ways and his thoughts greater than our thoughts. We don't know it all the time. When we do know certain things, it may be God speaking to that person to edify and help him grow. But in other times, it may not be. And that's not a thing for us to say, well, that person's going to hell. And because someone doesn't take the vaccine doesn't mean that you know, because if I say I'm not taking the vaccine, I'm greater than you. I'm not. I mean, you do you have a prayer life with God on a daily basis? Before you start to have a breakfast or a lunch or a dinner in, you, in the new day God gave you, do you have a prayer life? Do you seek God's word and hunger for it? before you get into the word, because the word says man shall not live by bread alone. So if that's the case that I can't live without God's word, you know, I can't live with, you know, I can't have breakfast, lunch, and dinner alone. I need the word of God saturating my entire day. So there is a reason why Jesus says he can't live on those things alone. You need the word. You need the word all the time. And it's not that the word stays in 2,000 years ago. It's the way the word works in our lives today because it's far greater than the things that have happened back then. 
and the Holy Spirit will minister to you. I don't believe that God is personal favoritisms upon people. He just looks at the heart. I mean, if you're hungry for God, he's going to be hungry for you. Keep in mind that, you know, he says, if, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. I will draw them to me. So really the reality is it's not something that uh, God cannot do for you. He will do. His word says it. He promises it. Now we can doubt about it, but then I got to realize for myself that I'm just temporarily here. This message may still be here after I'm dead. But the nice thing about it is while I'm still alive, I'm still moving forward to that time of eternity in Christ because it's far greater than what I have right now. And why not? I mean, but that doesn't mean I need to commit suicide in order to get into God's presence real fast. That, uh, that is not God. That is man-made thinking, and that's fear and doubt because we don't want to live here for Christ. And if that's the case, then how is it that you want to live for Christ in eternity if you didn't want to be here with him now? Is Christ really in you? You know, Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. You know, and the life that I live now in the flesh is not, you know, me, but it's Christ who loves me and died for himself for me. I mean, it, it, it's so much more rich and beautiful when we can see Christ in us with every breath we take and, uh, and throughout the day. And we can, I can always go to God and say, what did you mean? You know, I met up with this person today like I had a new neighbor and I'm like, Lord, speak to me, to this person about your love. Speak to me to this person about your joy and your peace so that he may obtain it too. He, he came back to me saying he was hungry for it. You see, the thing is, is I believe, you know, why is a serpent harmless as a dove? If we go gentle amongst everybody here and not bash each other, we will really be able to lift each other closer to Christ and Christ is going to be glorified in us. So really the heart of the matter situation here, pray. Seek God out. Read the word daily. Don't make decisions until you start to hear God's voice. Because the moment that you start to hear God's voice, you can declare like I am right now and like David was in the Old Testament, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. He found the presence of God in him 24-7. So it is with you and so it is with me. Can God speak to you? Absolutely. I mean, there, like I said, no favoritism. God spoke to everybody through the scriptures in the Bible, and he desires all men to come to the knowledge of the truth as well as salvation. It is here for you. But if you don't see it now, no worries. Did a baby know how to talk when he first was born or she was first born? No. But after a couple years of practicing and, and doing the things that are right, due to a teacher that came, which is the parents, you know, came to taught them and, and they started to hear and, and listen and then they began to talk. It's the same thing spiritually. We can learn things from these things that are natural to us to do in the spiritual so that we can grow into a place of holiness, oneness with God, to be a mirror image of him. Have a blessed day and the fullness of God's glory and grace. Love you guys.